Hey everyone, Mady Gomez here. I'm actually at the Advanced Security Institute. I'm here because I want to talk to weapons experts who can, you know, just talk to us. Right now, I think there's a lot of confusion out there, you know, just with people that I've talked to, uh, understanding um, and reducing the weapons confusion is really what I want to talk to you guys about. I want to talk to these experts to kind of clarify some of these things out for us. So let's go ahead. Let me introduce you to Joe and Jerome. Joe is actually the owner. And tell us about this place real quick. Okay, we're actually at the Laguna Gunnery and Laguna Shooting Center. Yeah. And we hold our classes over here. We hold classes with the CCW. We train armed guards. We train uh, just about anybody that wants to know about firearms. Right, okay. And then Jerome, who's back here. <laughs> Drinking water. Drinking water, but you actually brought your own guns in because yes. you're a gun enthusiast. Yes. You've been, you're a gun collector as well. Yes. How many guns would you say that you've, uh, you've collected so far? Uh, oh, right, there we go. The crazy part about that is I, lose, I lost count. You lost after, count. After a certain number. All right. Uh, um, you tend to not count them no more after okay. a while. So, so well, I definitely awesome. want to talk to you because, uh, you know, with your guns and just to talk to you a little bit about as a civilian, as a person who's just an enthusiast, I want to talk to you a little bit about more about that. But first, let's go ahead and um, talk, Joe, just about some of the misconceptions that there are out there regarding guns. You know, we hear a lot recently with the shootings that terrible shootings that have occurred. You know, we hear a lot about assault style weapon, which was used by you know, these three shooters, you know, both in uh, Dayton, El Paso, and even Gilroy. You hear about semi-automatic weapons. Talking to some folks, I realized that some people were saying, you know, oh, they used automatic weapons, but those are two different things, and one is legal, one isn't. Tell me more about that. You actually have three basic, basic operations of handguns. You have a revolver, you've seen it in the audio western show, them using revolvers all the time. Uh, when it comes to the rifles and modern handguns, you have two major operations called semi-automatic and full automatic. People get confused by just using the term automatic and just leaving it. A semi-automatic firearm is one where you squeeze a trigger. At that time, one round comes out and that's it, it stops. Full auto is when you squeeze a trigger and their uh, firearm will keep on firing until it's empty or until you release the trigger. And those are illegal. Those are illegal in California. Are there other names that it kind of, that it goes by as well as, um, uh, what are other names that you know these weapons as as well? Machine guns. Machine guns. A machine gun is a, one of the original names given to it. They went into the old Gatling guns, and then they went into uh, modern machine guns, the Thompson submachine gun, which was popular in the 30s and 40s. Okay. So those are all machine guns. Those are full automatic weapons. So your machine guns are just full automatic. Okay. So, yeah, I think there's just a lot of confusion right. with just the names itself because we hear about, you know, uh, SKS, AR-15, you know, all these different type of weapons. Now you're talking about models of firearms. Right, models. So where, in what category do these models fall in? Well, let's take a look at one over here. Okay, let's do it. And I'm going to turn this around. You can see. So, what are we looking at here? Over here, this is just a rifle. This is a it's rifle. It's not an AR-15. It's not any of those special things. This is just a rifle. This is a Stag Arms. Okay. That's now, what it's called. Correct. Stag okay. Arms is the maker. Okay. Okay. It's a semi-automatic. When this magazine is full, I pick it up and squeeze that trigger. Only one round is going to come out, no matter how hard I squeeze the trigger. This is a semi-automatic gun. Rifle. It's a semi-automatic rifle. Okay. Um, is full automatic means I squeeze that trigger and it would keep on letting the rounds out so this is empty. And it would look just the same. But it would just it would look exactly the same. You wouldn't just if face value, you would not be able to tell the difference. This is the same style of gun that was used by the shooters. That's what I understand. Okay, all right, but there's obviously that difference between semi and full. Right. Semi-automatic and full automatic. I don't know if anybody has full automatic and you know the semi-automatics. Then you talk about the magazine. Well, this is a typical magazine and one this can't be released because California law. Yeah. The uh, One of the shooters had a drum magazine that looks like a, a cylinder connected to it. In fact, they had twins of these two cylinders back to back. And what happened is they fired a round that comes out, one from one cylinder, one from the 
got a punch hole automatic that would just happen to keep on going and squeeze the trigger one time. On semi-automatic, you just have to keep on squeezing the trigger. You can semi-squeeze, one round will come out of one of the rounds. Got it. Okay. Tell us a little bit about more about this one. Um, when I look at it, the style here was very similar to the M16. When you look at the, uh, the pistol grip, the uh, body of it, the charging charging okay. handle. Real quick, let me turn. Can we turn the fan off? Because it's kind of, uh, I don't think we can hear you. Is that okay? I don't want to. <laughs> I think folks were having a little bit of a hard time hearing you, so let's just make sure we turn the fan off. Because I think this is a very important conversation to have. And also, you know what, let me get some of my notes over here. Thank you so much. I think that's going to make a big difference. All right, so I'm sorry about that. Where were we? We were talking uh, just about how the body of it appears almost like an M16. So a lot of people would confuse and say, oh, they had an M16, they had a full automatic weapon. What's the difference? You, you hear people M16 say... is a model. Okay. A model. These are, are all different models. Okay. M16... You know, AK-47, SKS, what's the difference between all of those? The difference starts going back to the 60s. The AK-47 was the preferred firearm of the communist law country, while the M-16 was the preferred rifle of the uh, United States and NATO. Okay. Um, so SKS came out as a model of a civilian version of an AK-47 because the AK-47 was illegal, being it was full auto. Mm. Now you have semi-auto AK-47s. So Which are legal. Over time and they're legal because they're semi-auto. Got it. So any of these weapons, these are just models. The, the names that models, we hear, right. as long as they are semi-automatic, that right. makes them legal? That's correct. Okay. Now there's a few other features that change because this is California. So what happens, you have you can have, you don't have it on this one, you can have a flash suppressor. As soon as you put a flash suppressor on, it's illegal because it has an element of an assault rifle. So there's pieces to the weapon that are that make it illegal in California. The down pieces and determine pieces of different weapons, pieces of different uh, rifles would, auto, would turn around and make them, not necessarily full auto, but just make them an assault rifle just because it's a popular term to excite the emotions of people. Goodness. Um, what else is different between the laws here in California and other states? Uh, other states, you can have more than a 10 round magazine. In California, we're stuck with 10 round magazines. Anything over 10 rounds is called high cap or high capacity. Got it. Okay. Hmm. The, the types of stock that's on there, that may be different. The way the magazine may or may not come out of the magazine well. That could be another issue. So a lot of these little things that are almost meaningless in reality are what suddenly makes a firearm a felony to possess. Right. Can we talk about, because I do understand, even though we know that semi-automatic guns are legal, there are a few models that have been, uh, specifically that have been banned. Have you heard of this? Certain type of uh, semi-automatic weapons that are banned. Um, some of those include like the AR-15s, AK-47s. Is it anything well, manufactured after 1994? It has to do with what parts are on it because you can still have an AR-15 as long as the magazine stays, it stays attached to the magazine well so you can't manage the magazine. So you have to load it Got from it. inside the breach. What are some of the big misconceptions people have when it comes to gun laws here in California? The biggest misconception goes back to what we started with was the difference between semi-auto and full auto. Pulling the trigger one time and having one round coming out or pulling the trigger one time and having the magazine empty. You have people who can squeeze real fast because they practice and it might sound to a person who's not that familiar with firearms like, gee, that sounds like full auto because all those rounds went out. Well, we showed you a video earlier of a guy shooting a pistol, a revolver, and that was faster than most semi-autos, yeah. most full autos. Tell me about the importance of also educating people um, about these weapons because you guys offer, you guys do offer a class. So there's two aspects of that. One is the education of the firearms itself. The other side is the education of what the laws are so people don't get in trouble with them. Right. But familiarity with a firearm 
would probably be good for everybody. Just think of this, you have one of these situations take place, or I work in a hospital sometimes, and at that hospital, we've had people leave a fire alarm in the restroom, and then I have a nurse coming out holding it like she's holding the tail of her rat, and, and doesn't know she's gonna, you know. Yeah. Here I found this in a restroom, the best thing of course, if you don't know any of firearms, just leave it there. Right. But with certain types of firearms, if, uh, you pick it up a certain way and it slams into the wall or the piping that's in there and all of a sudden it goes off, go off because however was slammed released the magazine and if you release, uh, not release the magazine, I'm sorry, release the uh, slide and if the slide jam you know, runs forward and slams that could also slam around because you have one working mechanism all of a sudden getting impact and sending an impact to another working mechanism. I did want to ask you because I do understand semi-automatic can also apply to handguns. It's not just these type of Correct. long guns, right? When you look behind you, all can of those handguns are semi-automatic. All of these are semi-automatics? Okay. And these are just Glocks, is that is that correct? They're not all Glocks, are they? No. No, I didn't think so. No, okay. Can the you tell us a little bit about? The ones on the bottom towards you are uh, 1911. What does that mean? <laughs> uh, 1911 is a model. Okay. And that model is named after Colts M1911. Gotcha. So uh, one of my favorite firearms to carry because they do have a concealed weapons permit is uh, Kimber M1911A1. So you know one of the things I was talking to you guys about earlier because you know when you talk about um, naming some of these weapons, many of them are named by the caliber. That's how, that's how they're... There's three things you deal with when you're talking about firearms. And again, a lot of that brings in misconceptions. The first thing is the maker. So I just mentioned Colt right. as a maker. And this particular rifle is made by Stag Arms. It's stenciled over here, but of course it's stamped in there as well. So you have lots of, you've got what, over 50 makers of uh, handguns and rifles. So the next step is going to be the model number. So like I was mentioning, my Kimber, the maker is the Kimber, the model is the M1911A1, the caliber, it's a 45 caliber. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when you talk, when you hear the 45, the 9 mil, and 23 thousandths of an inch in diameter. What does that mean? It's just under a quarter inch in diameter. Okay. The other size is 5.56 millimeter. Now, the difference in the round itself is the casing on the 5.56 is a little longer than a 223, makes it a more powerful round as far as the powder is concerned. The amount of powder is any bigger or anything like that. And let's talk about some of the just small things that can make a weapon, like a normal weapon like this, illegal in California. Because you mentioned um, some of those I things. I mentioned a flash suppressor can be put on a front. And then some people put a muzzle brake, which looks a lot like a flash suppressor. And what does that do? The muzzle brake is to reduce some of the recoil. A flash suppressor suppresses the flash. In other words, if you're shooting at nighttime, it would be hard to see the flash. In the daytime, you're not going to see the flash anyway, so it's a moot point. And that's illegal in California. And if you put a flash suppressor on, you, suddenly it's an illegal weapon. California calls it an assault rifle because you have a flash suppressor. Got it. And what else? I know you mentioned the there's, button. There's a bullet button over here, as they call it. And what happened is California made it so that these magazines, uh, these magazines cannot be removed. And it used to be that this was actually the, um, is what removed it, the button to remove the magazine. Mm -hmm. But the California laws changed that to where they can't have it for certain fi types of firearms. Otherwise, it becomes a assault rifle because you can change out the magazine quickly in, in a quicker loading it through the breach. Loading it through the breach means you're gonna to have to shove it shift your rounds inside and push them down. Gotcha. So California's trying to make it as difficult as possible and as unpleasant as possible to be a sport shooter. Or some people would say yeah. safe for <laughs> well, some people would say that. Remember I'm gonna play devil devil's advocate here when Except it comes to, for the to guns. People who break the laws to go around killing people, they broke the law to get the gun in to begin with. They broke the law that they said yeah. they couldn't have the gun, they broke the law they said they couldn't load the gun. Yeah. Let's not uh let's not get political. I definitely just wanna learn more about the guns. I just want people to know a little bit more about that. Um so anything else um 
that it would make a gun like this illegal. For certain types of uh, rifles, if you put a certain type of stock on it, like a folding stock, that would be illegal. Yeah, gotcha. Okay. Of course, we heard about the bump stock. The bump stocks are the one was the one that the uh, shooter used in Las Vegas, and that became a big deal. So the issue was we were trying to do uh, bump stocks. What is a bump stock? A bump stock allows the rifle, as you squeeze the trigger to a certain point, mm -hmm. lets it start firing just like a semi-automatic, or just like a full automatic. So you take a semi-automatic rifle, and instead of squeezing one time, now you're placing the trigger in a certain position, and hence the bump stock, it's the stock that's now creating the situation that all the mechanics for the round come out faster as if it's for a while. Gotcha. All right. Joe, anything else we need to know when it comes to um, clearing up the air with confusions when it comes to guns, to these type of weapons, assault weapons? There's a lot or? of confusion out there. There's a lot of different firearms. Yeah. Um, we're going to get rid of them. At any time, there's 60 brush fire wars going on in the world, and in every one of those kind of guns are illegal. Well, thank you. Thank you for taking the time. Uh, Jerome, do you want to talk to us a little bit? I know you are a gun enthusiast. You brought your own guns out here today. Um, what do you want to talk about? Um, your guns are pretty... Do you want to bring your guns out, maybe just one, and show us what okay. what you have and, have and a little bit about... Okay. So we're going to be talking to him in just a few minutes. And I actually just met Jerome uh, here a few days, just a few minutes ago. He brought in some of his weapons because, of course, he wanted to shoot. So, uh, yeah, again, I'm not trying to be political. We definitely don't want to bring that in the picture. I just want to talk about guns. Like I said, there's just been a lot of confusion uh, with wording what is legal, what isn't illegal. I'm also a gun myself. Um, because I don't know um, a lot about gun laws in California, so I wanted to make sure that um, this was an experience that we could both learn together and just get more, understand more about these weapons. Um, so, yeah, just if you just want to show us one of your weapons, let me turn this around real quick. Okay. And I'm going to do it this way because of the light. So, what are we looking at here? This is an AR-10. AR-10. <laughs> It's a precision, long-range rifle. I don't want to point it at anybody. Yeah. This gun okay. And this is how you bought it, or did you modify anything? I on built it? this one. You you built this yes. one. Okay. I bought the. It was. It, I bought it as a parts kit. Um, and I put everything together to it. Um, of course. Um, the the adjustable the adjustable stock is Magpul. The grip is Mac Pole. Um, the scope is a uh, Hawking. Okay. Um, the, the barrel is a 20 inch barrel. Yeah, let me. Um, of course, it's running a juggernaut to release the, uh, the mag. What, what does that mean when you say juggernaut? What, what is the that? The juggernaut basically, since I can't, since California want me to have a fix, a fix uh, magazine, mm -hmm. so. You know how I just can I can't release this like this, so this stops. It me won't from be easily. The, yeah, this stops released. me from releasing the mag. Yeah. In order for me to release the mag, I have to pop it open. And that's following California law. Yes, that's, that's and making it California compliant. Also, guys, you're gonna see me covering. This is me covering just the serial number that you also. That's that's yes. law. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's not only it's not the law, but like a lot of people can take the serial number. And engrave it onto their. But earlier firearm. you mentioned that you have to now engrave. Yeah, and this serial number is um, in my name. Yeah. So yes. like, if this gun was to be stolen and used in a crime, people would know who it belongs I didn't report to. It, California come to me. Gotcha. For this gun. Tell me, uh, since when you're a gun enthusiast? Uh, tell me, since when you, you know, started collecting guns? How did you first start liking? Um. I didn't start. I didn't start buying guns till after I graduated from college. Um, I think I started my first gun was probably in like what, 2007, 2008, um, and then after that, going going shooting with friends, um, and then you know my friends 
they was very like particular how they want you to shoot their guns. No. And so like I was like, you know what, I'll go out and buy my own. And uh, you know, when you modify some of these guns, that's obviously completely legal. Yes. Or, is okay. there anything that you have to comply with when you modify? Or I mean, well, let's say modification. When, when you talk about the term modification, so like, let's say the guns they have up there comes yeah. with like a wreck, like a regular pistol grip, mm -hmm. and if the pistol grip doesn't feel feel good, so I'll change it out. So sort of like this, this is a Magpo after grip, aftermarket grip, and it feels much comfortable, much much better than the regular grip that came. With oh, I see what you're or saying. Or this looks much better. Than the regular adjustable, um, adjustable stock. You know, it feels better. Yeah, there, but there's a lot of, like, gr there's a gray area there because there's things you can't do to it that yes. will, would make it obviously illegal. Yes, like for instance, I can't, I can't since they outlaw the adjustable butt stock that she was talking to the owner about. I can't put a, I can't put a, um, a bump stock on this, right? On this rifle or none of my rifles because it's, it's banned. Um, there are certain things like I can't use the, the regular um, the, magries on this rifle that we just talked about. That would be illegal. So there's some things I can't do, and there's some things I can do. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, thank you. No thank problem. you for taking the time to talk to us and show us your your guns. You're Thanks welcome. so much. Thank you. <laughs> oh, sorry, covering that up. So yeah, just wanted to talk to you guys about um, just to talk to weapons experts. Um, you know, a little bit more about what these guns are, just the legality behind them. I know there's, again, been a lot of confusion. You know, after we heard, you know, uh, these tragedies, we just started hearing about assault rifles. But I wanted to get dive deeper into, let's talk about these assault rifles because some of these, they're different. Um, and so, yeah, just wanted to come out here and talk to these experts and maybe clarify. Hopefully we were able to do that for you. Um, so thank you again for watching. Again not political just really wanted to touch on um, what these weapons are so thanks for watching